thanks a lot for joining us. How many folks are we looking at, Jake? We've got 70. We got 70 folks here, some, some stragglers, that's okay. We're gonna get started. Today, uh, other than doing a, a quick review of what we did last week, we're going to spend some time on GMAT quantitative word problems. Word problems aren't specifically a type of uh, math question like geometry might be or algebra, but the GMAT hat is so word problem obsessed, I really wanna just sort of go over as many of these as we can here today so that we see how we can sort of get our heads wrapped around word problems and into the world view of, of word problems. So let's go ahead and jump into a quick review of the other, uh, what we learned last week. Great, can everyone see this question all right? Not really, let me just move it over a little bit. Great, there we go. So this, I'm gonna give everyone about 10 seconds or 15 seconds to read this question to themselves and then we're gonna work it together. Okay, so if we're employing our lessons from last week on, uh, we looked at noun verb agreement and pronoun agreement questions on the GMAT. We can see, and we also talked about looking for patterns and differences in the answer choices. So we can see right here, the very first underlined word, there's a suggest, a suggest, a suggests, another suggests, and another one. So we have that split where two are one way and three are the other. So we know what the issue is that we have to address. At least this is one issue that'll help us narrow down the answer choices. So this is a noun verb agreement issue uh, and we have this verb here and we need to find what noun it's uh, referring to. So the decline in reported computer security threats. So the decline. Is the decline singular or plural? And should it go with suggest or suggests? Everyone type in the chat box uh, whether or not it should be suggest or suggests. Decline should be suggests or suggest. Great, so if you said suggests, you'd be correct, which means we can eliminate A and B. Now, if I'm guessing really quickly because there's like five seconds left on the, my GMAT, I'm just going to pick C. It's the shortest answer. That would be my last second guess. But we're, we don't have five seconds left on our GMAT. Let's take a look at these two questions and see what the differences are. Uh, these three answer choices and see what the differences are. So suggest that consumers will continue are, is similar with all of them. So suggest that consumers will continue to shop or suggest that consumers will continue with a high level of confidence online, uh, of confidence online shopping, but that, that seems a little wordy and awkward, and then suggest that consumers will continue with their shopping online with a high level of confidence. So continue with, continue to, this is the shortest, simplest, concise answer choice. I'm pretty sure it's correct, let's pick it and see. Correct, and of course, if we're a Grokit GMAT mem standard member, we can view explanations. We can also pull in some of the Grokit GMAT textbook, which will help us on sentence correction uh, when we're working on sentence correction. And there's a few articles that we can read. Great. There we go. So let's take a look at one more question. If you can guess what it is, we, we did a noun verb agreement question from last week. Let's do a pronoun agreement question. Everyone go ahead and read this paragraph. We're gonna work this question together.
Great, so my GMAT robot rule is that when I see a pronoun underlined, I find its antecedent, I see this pronoun it, what is the antecedent that this it is referring to? Everyone tell me in the chat box. What is the antecedent of this pronoun? What is it referring to? If you said energy drinks, you'd be correct. Energy drinks, so are energy drinks singular or plural? Should be plural, let's get rid of it. And this doesn't have either, this has they, that seems like the correct one. So even though energy drinks uh, have gained popularity in the 16 to 21 age bracket, should they, for people, for people, for people with caffeine sensitivity, they can be potentially detrimental in that their sleep patterns could be negatively disrupted. So uh, this brings up an issue of whose sleep habits and that creates some ambiguity for this pronoun, so we don't like that. Uh, we like this sentence as it is. We don't need to change it around too much. C should be good. It solves this issue of the antecedent and what pronoun it should be working with. We have they over here uh, and it over here, so we can get rid of that it as well for that, but we don't need this change in the sentence like we see here. So let's pick C and see if we are correct, and we are. So again, typical GMAT pronoun, noun, uh, pronoun agreement uh, questions and verb agreement questions, and we worked them just like we learned and learned to, and it went just fine. So like I said, today we're gonna talk about some word problems and how to approach them on the GMAT, and we're gonna really just work a lot of examples together today because I, I find that that's what people uh, like the most on these types of, uh, on tackling word problems and it actually uh, is the best way to sort of get our heads into the world of thinking about GMAT word problems uh, as word problems and not necessarily nasty, uh, nasty math questions. So again, my name is Farboud Nivi. You can tweet me at Farboud if you have questions. So talking a little bit about applied slash word problems. Everyone see these slides all right, great. <clears throat> We want to take them step by step. We're going to really break these questions down. You're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how on plenty of questions you can essentially have the answer by the time you're done reading it for the first time. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how I actually do them on the GMAT, but I want you to understand that they're really about translating the word problems into uh, information and figures that we can work quickly with. So we want to set up equations and define variables where and if possible and if we need to and if we can just do simple arithmetic, we'll do that as well. So to talk about some translations from English to math, because that's what we're talking about here. When we see the word what in a question, we can usually replace it with a variable like x. When we see the word of or product or times, we can replace it with multiplication. Not, a, not the variable x, but the multiplication. It's not an English class today. Uh, if we see the words more than, sum, or increased by, we can replace it with a plus. If we see less than, we can see, or fewer, or difference, we can replace it with a minus. We just gotta make sure we use it correctly, and we'll see that in an example here in a second. If we see percent or the sign, we can just divide whatever came before it with, by 100, and that's it, how you'll see that I'll work these questions. If we see is or was or equal to, we can replace it with an equal sign, and same thing for these for inequalities. This is really just a chart that you have to memorize. So uh, let's take a look at what this is like in an example. So let's translate this question from English to math. 18%, and we're just gonna translate it as we read it for the first time. 18%, so 18% means divide by 100. Of means multiply. 28 means 28. Is should mean equal. Four less than eight times a number. And this is just 
Be careful when you see the less than. You just got to think about it for a second. It's four less than eight times a number. So we get eight times that number, and we want four less than it. We don't want four minus eight x. That would be the other way around. So just when you're seeing less than, you just got to stop for a moment and make sure you're getting it correct. That's the, 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 as nasty as it gets on that. So we just translated this English into math. We can work this question pretty quickly and solve for x. And that's what we want to do on these types of questions. But we're going to see all sorts of word problem questions. So a few more common techniques that we're going to see today and you should keep in mind uh, are setting up equations like by converting English to math, which we just did. Uh, pick numbers that are really easy to work with. So uh, 60 is a good number that we can use a lot of times on the GMAT. And how do I get 60? Does anyone know why I pick 60 as a number that's really useful on the GMAT? Uh, it's because it's, it's divisible by what? What are the numbers that you can divide nicely into 60? You can do 1, 2, 3. Can we do 4? Mm -hmm. 4 times what? 4 times 15. Nice. You can do 5. You can do 6. Great. So all of these work really nicely. Uh, and we, when we see a lot of fractions on the GMAT, we see one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth, one-sixth. So 60 is a good number to work with on questions like that. Plug in answer choices. Just try them out. If there are discrete values in the answer choices, we can try them out. We've seen that. Job double checking our answers. This has to do with just, you know, a lot of times we can eliminate some of the extreme answers because they're just not within the ballpark of what this question should reasonably be able to get us. We can't have like negative numbers of chairs in a room. So uh, just make sure that the answers make sense and you can eliminate some that are just out of the range of sense. Uh, and obviously, not necessarily obviously, but as you can imagine, using 100 in percent questions works really well. And so does 200. They're both pretty easy numbers to manipulate. So <clears throat> before we get to homework, we're going to work a lot of questions here together. And then we're going to talk a little bit about a new uh, GMAT course page that we have. And um, is it up and running yet? I think so. OK, uh, it should be. If not, it's, it's still a useful resource. We're going to finish getting everything up there. But uh, you'll be able to access homework. You'll be able to access the, the slides from class. You'll be able to. Uh, get announcements from us. It'll just be a course page. I'll give you the URL for that at the end of the class. And if you're excited about it, give me a woohoo in the Facebook embed. I'll give you a woohoo. I'm pretty excited. It's cool. You'll, you'll get a kick out of it. 